and welcome back to the 2013 UCI Juniors Track World Championships. I'm Kat Cuby and we've got loads more exhilarating action here at the Sir Chris Hoy Velodrome in Glasgow. This velodrome is one of the most modern in the world and it's also thought to be one of the busiest and it's certainly been busy over the last week with around 250 individual athletes from 32 countries. There's no doubt that this is one of the most important events in the cycling calendar. So on to day five, and there's still plenty to see here today. We're gonna to start off with the men's Madison. Great Britain, again, back at the head of the race, Jacob Reagan. And over the top, a little bit of a move here, making his way through the uh, traffic is the Colombian rider. Colombia and Germany on the attack, Eduardo Estrada. Belarus, uh, despite a brave effort to stay clear um, of losing that lap, have been caught by the main field again. So they're uh, several laps behind now. I think four laps behind, very possibly, for Belarus. But we uh, focus our attention very much on the head of the race. And the riders also will be focusing their attention because, uh, as the Russian Federation rider just uh, avoids a back marker, 23 laps means it's only three away from the sprint. And remember, New Zealand and Denmark, the riders on the lead lap, are separated by only one point to the advantage of New Zealand on five, Denmark on four. 500 metres from the next sprint. Denmark, better placed than New Zealand at the moment, but uh, neither of them are currently in the points because Australia and uh, Australia into the finishing straight. They are uh, being chased hard here by Germany, who make the change. Then it's Denmark, then it's France. Colombia latching onto that as well. But at the line this time, there will be points. Denmark are better placed here to collect a point. The Danish rider trying to come around the outside, but it's uh, Australia, Germany, Denmark, France, subject as ever to a confirmation there. So uh, that will have sneaked a small advantage for the Danes if that uh, sprint result is confirmed. Just 19 laps of this uh, absolutely action-packed Junior World Madison Championship to go. I think Mike's got the latest information. I have indeed, and that sprint was very interesting from Denmark's point of view. Australia took the five points, Germany the three, Denmark the two and France the one. New Zealand, who were the leaders, didn't score there. Remember, Denmark and New Zealand are the only ones who've lapped the field. So Denmark's two points, enough to take them over New Zealand now. Uh, Denmark with six points, New Zealand with five. Now, everybody else is at one lap. So in third place now, Australia, who've got the most points, but of course they're la a lap in arrears on Denmark and New Zealand, and that's the way it works. Australia then in third place, although they've scored 16 points. France now down to fourth place, uh, also at one lap with 12 points. And of course, we have one more sprint to come, the final sprint. So at the moment, it's looking good for Denmark and New Zealand, but there's a, quite a tussle going on behind them for bronze. Absolutely, Mike. Down to the last few laps here, as the team of Belarus will be withdrawn for falling too many laps behind. In the meantime, a new attack here from Italy. Red flag being unfurled here to uh, remove the Belarusian riders from the track. They are at a, a deficit of four laps. And now they've got the message, so Belarus leave the track. And that race is over, but uh, the battle for the win still very much in evidence here. It's uh, between Denmark and New Zealand. As we uh, count down the laps, the possibility of a lap gain gets uh, more distant. Six points for Denmark, five points for New Zealand. Head of the race are the Italian team just coming out of uh, corner three. Corner two, I should say, heading for corner three. So the Italians are currently languishing in uh, joint sixth place on three points. And as Mike has uh, just mentioned, the battle will be determined by the uh, result of the final sprint for the bronze medal at least, and of course for the gold and silver as well, because Denmark and New Zealand on the same lap, the only two teams who have gained and retained that lap during the course of this uh, 120 laps of uh, high-speed Madison action. Oh, there's a huge crash there down uh, underneath the scoreboard. It looks like New Zealand have been felled in that crash as well. Denmark, they were okay. Well, of course, the other rider from the team needs to stay in the action. 
they can return to the race. It's only within the last uh, kilometre that uh, teams can't return to the race. So uh, the head of the race is still Italy in the back straight. The chase being uh, led by Great Britain and Australia. So I think New Zealand are going to be able to rejoin the race with a second man here. Coach pushing him back into the action. Well, I did uh, sound that cautionary note a few moments ago that as uh, the riders tie up, it becomes uh, more and more difficult to keep that focus of attention required to execute the changes with so many riders on the track. Only eight laps to go. Great Britain leading the string in the back straight. Well, they've left it late, but uh, if they can sweep up some points, Great Britain, who are uh, currently in eighth place with two, well, they uh, are outside the potential to get the bronze medal, unfortunately, but it'd be great to cross the line in first place. Great Britain leading uh, Denmark down the back straight. Denmark, of course, are in a very good position with uh, a one-point advantage over New Zealand. New Zealand having uh, suffered the uh, misfortune of one of their team crashing out there, but has now rejoined the, rejoined the race. Denmark, Great Britain, Australia, the order with Switzerland chasing hard. Six laps to go. It'll be five when the leaders reach the home straight this time. It is Denmark, the leaders in the classification. They are at the front of the race here. Well, Denmark have determined to take this one literally by the scruff of the neck. Australia, Great Britain and Switzerland in the chase here. Danish rider cutting his way through the resting riders there. It's uh, Matthias Krigbaum of Denmark. Now he swings his, his uh, teammate Jonas Poulsen into the action. Denmark are the head of the race. Czech Republic. And then it's uh, Switzerland, followed by uh, Colombia and Great Britain. And New Zealand have found their second wind after that uh, misfortune a few laps ago. So New Zealand now fully committed to the chase. They need to try and reel Denmark in and get more points in the final sprint. New Zealand, the man making the running here is Liam Aitchison. Remember, the Dane is the leader on the track here, underneath the scoreboard. Bell this time for Denmark. Head of the race are Denmark. The final change for the Danes. But here come New Zealand. Denmark being chased hard by New Zealand. Remember, Denmark have the one-point advantage. Denmark around the final bend. Here come New Zealand, but they've left it too late. Denmark crossed the line in first place. New Zealand follow them across the line. Wow, what a great Madison race. And Denmark look as though they have got it. They had the lap advantage. They had one point ahead of New Zealand, and they took the final sprint. So, Mike will confirm that result for us, but no doubt that Denmark and New Zealand, the two teams who gained the lap, will take gold and silver, but who will win the battle for the bronze medal? In the men's Madison, Australia takes the bronze, New Zealand takes the silver, and Denmark finds gold. Now we're going into the men's sprint. So, the two riders line up once again, as before. On the inside for New Zealand, it's Jeremy Presbury. And on the outside for Lithuania, Svonas Janauskas. Three laps of the track between these two to decide who becomes the junior world sprint champion. Well, the adrenaline will be really going with these two riders, especially after that... Uh little delay while we just rectify the problem with the track now full concentration three laps away from a medal but will it be gold will it be silver this is the one that decides it So Presbury was the winner of the first match. His opponent, Janaskas, responded by taking the match two. Both powerful sprinters with a good closing speed. So this tactical battle may hold the key to the outcome of this sprint final.
Both riders still high on the track. There's only one lap to go when we come to the finishing straight this time. Who's going to be first to commit to the sprint here? There's the bell. That's the sound they want to hear because now they know we're full on for the line and Janauskas attacking from the second position here draws level with Presbury as they come into the finishing straight Lithuania on the outside well well he takes it Svajunas Janauskas of Lithuania with a very well judged sprint came around his opponent part way down the back straight had the closing speed to beat him to the line and in a match that took two to one to take it. The gold medal is taken by Lithuania and the silver medal by Jeremy Presbury of New Zealand. In the men's sprint, Russia takes home bronze, New Zealand gets another silver and Lithuania takes gold. And we'll be back after the break with the final thrilling events here on the last day of the UCI 2013 Junior Track World Championships. Don't go away. Welcome back to the 2013 UCI Junior Track World Championships. We are into our last day here in Glasgow and let's head now to the final event in the Women's Omnium. Just climbing aboard in the home straight, lying in fifth place so far for Italy, it's Maria Sperotto. And in the back straight for Great Britain, already a gold medalist in the team pursuit earlier this week, lying sixth overall at the moment, Emily Kay. Italy versus Great Britain. Sporotto, winner of the uh, point race. And Emily Kay came good in the individual pursuit, so we know she's got uh, timed events in her repertoire. Let's see how she goes in this 500 meter time trial. This could uh, propel her up the classification. It's very close, but uh, just a small advantage here to. Uh, the rider in the back straight, who is Emily Kay. Time for Emily Kay, and it is the new fastest time by 0 0.03 of a second. Emily Kay, 37.699, goes into the lead. And Maria Sperotto of Italy will take fourth place at this stage with 37.990. So Emily Kay of Great Britain improving on Piotrowskaya of Belarus's time by just 0 0.03 of a second. So Canada versus Australia. Kinley Gibson, the winner of the uh, scratch race half an hour or so ago. And uh, Macy Stewart, her opponent here. Let's see who gets to the starting station first. It's the Australian just ahead of Gibson after the first lap. Of course, uh, the all-important comparison would be with the leader's time of uh, Emily K, 37.669 of the target. And as we come to the completion of this one, it is uh, Stewart who finishes first, but only fourth fastest, 37,938. And Gibson of Canada, 38,902. So that looks quite good for Emily Kay with still just one heat to go. Anna Kanawa, the leader for Germany. I think she's pretty safe unless she does a really terrible 500, which I can't see happening. Celine Laberly is still within striking distance of the Brit British rider. In the back straight at, uh, at the moment, in the dark blue of France, in second place on 22 points after five events, it's Soline Lamboli. And in the home straight, the current leader for Germany with only 18 points from the previous five events. Very, very good indeed. Anna Klar.
So the final heat of the 500 metre time trial, the final action in the women's Omnium competition here. The top two placed riders going into this round, Anna Knar and Celine Lambele. As they come round to complete the first 250 metres. Advantage, well, it's uh, pretty evenly matched there. It is just marginally faster for Lambele. Let's see what happens in the second 250 metres here. Kanar in the white colours, Lambele in the dark blue. Heading for the finishing stations now. And Kanar, I think, just getting there first, 36.533. And that's the new fastest time for uh, Anna Knarr of Germany and uh, Celine Lambele of uh, the riders Lambele of, of France goes second fastest, 36.710, pushing Emily K down to third spot. So we will uh, endeavour to confirm the outcome of the uh, women's omnium and uh, whether or not uh, Emily K has uh, improved on her position just as soon as we got those finishing positions for you. But certainly those two rides by uh, Knarr and Lambele confirm them in first and second place. In the women's omnium, a bronze medal for Great Britain, France takes silver and Germany bags gold. Next up is the women's Kirin with Team GB's Daniel Kahn looking for a clean sweep with another gold medal. So on to the second heat with another six of the women coming to the line fighting for three more places in that final a little later on in the afternoon. Introducing them to you in no particular order from Australia, Tanele Falapi, for Belgium, Katarina Vermont, for Colombia, Marta Bayona, for France, Melisandre Pain, for Great Britain, two gold medals already to her name this week, Danielle Kahn, and for Russia, Yekaterina Rogovaya. So again, the first three riders across the line here will progress to that uh, final for first through to six, where they'll uh, meet Nikki Dick Randella, Sujin Kim, and uh, Tatiana Kizileva. Great Britain's representative here, Danielle Kahn, sprint gold medalist yesterday. Also, 500 metre time trial medalist earlier in the uh, week of competition here at the uh, World Junior Track Championships. Radio has the wheel of the Derny Pacer in the early stages from uh, Russian Federation is Ekaterina Rogovaya, being followed by uh, Marta Bayona of Colombia. And it's the Australian, Khan next, followed by Belgium. And then finally at the back of the string is uh, Melisandre Pan of France. Pace gradually winding up, our on-screen graphic there showing you uh, we're currently at 34 kilometers per hour. As uh, if you were with us a couple of days ago, you'd have heard uh, our Derny Pacer, Davey Urquhart, explaining how this uh, works. There is actually a uh, laid down plan at uh, what point he increases the pace and at what speed he leaves the track with two and a half laps to go. So pretty soon we'll be touching 40 kilometers per hour as they come into the finishing straight this time. We're at the halfway point, four laps to go. Remember, as long as that journey is on the track, the riders cannot draw level or overtake it. But once it leaves with two and a half to go, then as we've seen already, it is all-out action. It's a sprint for the line and try and secure one of the first three places to progress to the final for the medals a little later. So, pacer off the track. Rogovaya of Russian Federation is ahead of Bayona of Colombia. Waiting to see if any attacks come from the rear of the string. And it is uh, Melisandre Pan of France starting to move around the outside, drawing level with Bayona of Colombia. Now she overhauls uh, Rogovaya as well. So uh, Pan taking this one on from the front is still a lap to go when they come to the finishing straight this time. And um, Great Britain's Daniela Kahn now starting to make a move around the outside. Kahn takes up the lead with 250 metres to go. Daniela Kahn has a gap of more than one bike length. Pan chasing hard here with uh, the Colombian still in third spot. But Great Britain looking good for the win. Daniela Kahn under the scoreboard. 
Ford into the finishing straight and she is going to bring it through to the line. Daniela Kahn of Great Britain takes victory in heat two. Melisandre Pan gets second place and third across the line was uh, Marta Bayona of Colombia. And now on to the gold medal race. Well, as we get confirmation of that minor final, Falapi winning it, therefore seventh overall. Heinz in second place in that event, therefore eighth overall. And Grill for Italy just getting the photograph for third place in the event, therefore ninth overall. Rogovaya tenth overall, Verimo eleventh, and Deborah of India in last place, twelfth. But we now move to the biggie. This is the one where medals will be won and lost. The final of the women's Kirin. And naming them in no particular order, for Belgium, Nikki de Grandella, for Colombia, Marta Bayona, for France, Melisande Pang, for Korea, Sujin Kim, for Russia, Tatiana Kiselova, and for Great Britain, Danielle Kahn. So the medal's at stake here, and it's Dick Rendella, silver medalist in the sprint, who is, uh, comes to the front of the little string here and latches onto the rear wheel of that Derny. Kisileva of Russian Federation next, followed by Pau of France. Then uh, Daniela Kahn, already twice gold medalist this week. And the final two riders in line from Colombia, Marta Bayona, and just in front of her, the rider representing Korea, Sujin Kim. So that's the order they have established behind the pacer. So Daniela Khan aiming to emulate the feat of uh, our event ambassador Becky James by winning uh, sprint and Kieran gold. But she has to overcome the uh, other riders in this heat to do so. And it's a strong field here for this uh, medal ride as we reach 35, 36 kilometers per hour. Pace slowly being ramped up. Khan in fourth spot, just uh, behind uh, Melisandre Pam, but it's Nikki de Grandella, who is uh, right behind that Derny, tucked onto the back wheel. Halfway mark this time. Pam had a little gap open there, perhaps uh, anticipating a move once the uh, Derny leaves the track. Well, this one really building the suspense now. The Derny will be leaving the track in the back straight. De Grandella looks behind. In fact, all the riders looking behind, with the exception of the Colombian, who is at the back. Derny leaves the track. De Grandella leading Kisileva with Pan in third place and Khan fourth, vying for that position with Kim of Korea. De Grandella looking up the track just waiting for this one to explode into action. We know Daniel Khan has got a long sprint. Pan did very well to hold that up there as uh, Khan came through. Danielle Khan of Great Britain takes up the lead position with a lap and a little bit to go. Bell this time. Daniela Kahn taking this one on from the front but being challenged now by De Grandella of Belgium. The Belgian uh, who lost out to Kahn in the sprint draws level. Kahn though retains the advantage, taking her opponent just slightly up the track there. Kahn though settling back below that red line. Daniela Kahn of Great Britain on the front. Pan challenging around the outside on the line. Oh, Pan took it just ahead of Daniela Kahn. Well, Mes Melisandre Pan of France. Little twitch in the middle of that uh, build-up to the sprint. She did very well to stay upright, and she did even better to cross the line ahead of Great Britain's uh, Danielle Kahn. We'll wait for confirmation of that result, but no question that it was the, the French rider, Melisandre Pan, who just beat Danielle Kahn across the finish line. In the women's Kieran, Korea takes home bronze, Great Britain gets itself a silver medal, and France takes gold. So sadly, that marks the end of the 2013 UCI Juniors Track World Championships here in Glasgow. 
We've seen some amazing performances on the track and I've no doubt we'll see many of these young riders competing again in the near future. I'm Kat Cubie, I'll see you soon.